What's going on YouTube? Bowtie Fragrance Guy here, man. We talk about fragrances on this channel, but I like to throw in some style, fashion, and grooming tips as well. Listen, looking good and smelling great. I think those things go hand in hand. So if you're into looking great, smelling great, I think I can help you out. Make sure you hit subscribe and don't forget to enable notifications by hitting that little bell icon as well. So anytime I upload a new video, hopefully you get notified. <laughs> So on today's video, guys, we're gonna be doing my 10 favorite fragrances currently right now, or as we uh, like to title this video, 10 Fragrances for Life, as it pertains to right now, uh, in this moment. All right, I like to do this periodically because it kind of gives me a chance to kind of measure the last time I did it versus this time. Are the things the same? Have things changed? Or are there any newcomers uh, to the list? You know how we do, man. It's just a fun video to do. So we're going to be jumping into that today. So I'm going to run the intro. When we come back, my 10 fragrances for life as it pertains to right now in this moment. So if you want to see what's on the list, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Let's get it. The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's jump right into this video. Now, before I give you uh, the 10 fragrances, I do want to say there are several fragrances in my collection that I hold very close to my heart. I think there's a total of six of them. Uh, one of those fragrances, of course, you guys know, was probably my one of my first real loves. I mean, like, a fragrance that I really cherished and held close to my heart. This was probably one of the first ones, this original Santal from Creed. All right, so no matter uh, when I do a list like this, I don't have to mention this fragrance. This is just one of my favorites of all time from Creed. This is sandalwood, this is cinnamon, this is juniper berries, this is lavender. I love this fragrance. It's clean, but it gives you those uh, sweet nuances. I think Tonka Bean is in here as well. Those sweet nuances that I love. And uh, again, I just think you really can't go wrong with this scent profile and it's close to my heart for so many different reasons. Again, one of my first niche fragrance purchases, one of my first niche fragrance loves. And um, again, there's some sentimental, uh, kind of nostalgic uh, qualities and values that I hold with this fragrance as well. Uh, so original Santal will always be um, in there, so it's an honorable mention. Also, any of fragrances that I've worked on personally, the five fragrances that I've done with Novitas, you know, Serenade, uh, what was first called Obad, now called Lyric, uh, we have Satori Nui, Old Devil Nair, and Divine Aphrodisiac. All four, five of those fragrances are held very close to my heart. Um, obviously, working on those fragrances and being a creative director and really kind of coming up with, you know, everything as it pertains to those fragrances will always, of course, make those my some of my favorite fragrances. I mean, so those don't even get included on a list like this. Those those fragrances along with Original Santal go without saying, as well as this one that I worked on with uh, Jose from Teaching Men's Fashion, Bomb Vivant. If you guys didn't get a chance to smell this fragrance, it's a phenomenal scent. I'm wearing it right now. Absolutely, oh, it smells phenomenal. So those fragrances go without saying for me. All right, so they're in a little special category all by themselves. So now, let's get to the top 10. Now there are several things that I really thought about, and I really, when I do this, I wanna make sure you guys understand something. I really put some thought into this list. I don't just haphazardly, of course, just kind of throw fragrances in there. There's several things that I really consider. Um, fragrances, obviously, I have to really love them. Not just like, but love. Then I also look at now, how much am I actually wearing this fragrance? Where I would probably need to repurchase a bottle, it's gonna be highly likely that I'm gonna to have to repurchase a bottle, and if I had to, would I? So those are some other things that I kinda of take into consideration now. Uh, as few as other, so a few other smaller factors. But anyway, the first one, and these are in no particular order, from bond number nine, this is Lafayette Street. Coriander, apple, and Broxen Tonka Bean. 
yeah this one just fresh and really mass appealing and i i can't just to describe to you guys how good it is just from a standpoint of uh seriously i don't have to think at all about this fragrance if i no matter where i'm going no matter what time of the year it is i know this fragrance is going to work um i was one of two one of the first people to really talk a lot about this fragrance on youtube from what i could recall i mean I, of course i haven't seen i don't know everybody that's talking about fragrances on YouTube, but I think I only saw one other person mention this fragrance before I got it, and that was probably Big Beer Business. But um, but anyway, just one of my favorite fragrances from Bond Number no. 9. There's so many in that house that I love, um, but I had to kind of do some deductive reasoning as well when I looked at this list. Like, I have so many other rose fragrances. I wanted to do New York Oud, but it's discontinued really hard to find. Uh, Bleecker Street was in consideration. Centerpiece for him which is some of my favorites from that brand, one of my favorite niche brands. But when I thought about this one, this just kind of won out, man. But, and, and, and part of that was because I was one of the first people to kind of start talking about this fragrance on YouTube a lot, at least. It's so good, man. But anyway, definitely right now, as it stands today, this would be one I would keep for the rest of my life. From bond number nine, this is Lafayette Street. The next fragrance that I have that will currently make my 10 for life is this one from Roger Parfum's Creation E. Look at that gorgeous bottle. Look at that beautiful cognac colored juice. Of course, this has cognac in it, tobacco, benzoin. Oh my gosh. This is so good, guys. This boozy Coca-Cola uh, fragrance is just you know so creative now that's exactly what it smells like to me it smells like you know cognac and coca-cola you know I, at the end of the day like I said there's some tobacco factors here the benzoin gives that vanillic touch on the dry down but it's such a creative fragrance now with the house of Roger Parfums I go back and forth I know there's been times I've done this list and I've actually put Diaghilev uh, on this list and I actually like I said go back and forth between those two fragrances uh, Elysium is another fragrance from that house that I would probably consider uh, For a list like this because I think ultimately those are probably my three fra favorite fragrances from Roger Parfums and I don't know man. Sometimes it just depends on the mood. Sometimes I put Diaghilev on here. Sometimes I go with this and uh, I wore this maybe about a month and a half ago a month ago maybe a month ago just reminded me of how good this is, man. Definitely one I'm keeping for life. I, I A lot of these guys, these fragrances guys on this list kind of defies description. I love them. That's really all I can say. So one I'm definitely keeping for life right now, if I had to choose, is this one from Roger Parfums. Creation E. If somebody made me choose my absolute favorite fragrance in my entire collection right now, this would probably be the fragrance that I would choose. From the brand of Bodicita Victorious, this is Blue Sapphire. Blue Sapphire Lemon Chamomile Rose Saffron and a hint of Oud. <sighs> With me having so many rose fragrances in my collection, sometimes it's hard to find something extremely unique where rose and oud are two of the primary notes because a lot of the rose oud combinations start to have a very similar uh, vibe to them. They start to smell a little bit similar, a little bit familiar. They were able to accomplish a very unique fragrance that featured rose and oud. There's enough oud in here to talk about it, but it's more, a little bit more of a supporting note here, but there's definitely rose and again, I've talked about it before, this candied, citrusy, lemon uh, opening in here. The florals are well, are perfectly done and blended to perfection in this fragrance. A little bit of a leathery touch from Saffron. This stuff is just, it's next level. And that's why, of course, as I stated when I opened the, this particular uh, description of this fragrance, that this will probably be my favorite fragrance. It offers so much versatility. <sighs> You never put your nose on it, man. Do yourself a favor and smell this stuff. Without question, one of my 10 fragrances for life. Well, and that will probably be forever. From the brand of Boda City Victorious, this is Blue Sapphire.
All right, guys, this next fragrance that I will keep for life, there's so much nostalgia uh, with this fragrance. I've been through a 50 ml of it already. I am at least a third of the way through of 100 ml. I wear it. I love it. I have all of the, uh, the, the body wash for it, the body spray, the, the beard oil, one of my favorite fragrances. So this is true to form from Tom Ford. This is Oud Wood. It's Oud Wood, man. This is Oud Cardamom, Sichuan Pepper, Vanilla, a little bit of Tonka on the dry down. Not a really, real, really a oudy fragrance. So, um, for those of you that haven't smelled this yet, don't be turned off by the the oud uh, in the name. Just give it a little dark woodiness. Not really what I'm accustomed to smelling when I smell a lot of other oud fragrances. It's there, but in the background, uh, a little bit spicy, a little peppery nuances here and there, a little bit of sweetness from the tonka on the dry down. Just. This is so good, man. Seriously, this, I, I, like I said, these fragrances on this list for me, uh, and, and these reactions are very, uh, very genuine, authentic. This is just, these are some of my favorites. So I don't really have much else to tell you besides the fact that they are phenomenal fragrances, seriously. <sighs> Love this stuff, man. From Tom Ford, Oud Wood, Oud Wood, Oud Good. Yep. Now this next fragrance is a newcomer to this list, but when I think about it, I cannot deny how much I love it. It's not overly complex. It's not like a super niche or creative type fragrance. It's none of that, but dang, this thing smells good. And the proof is in the pudding of how much I've worn it and I've had it for less than a year. And that's with all these other fragrances that I have in my collection. This, is, this one gets um, utilized over the past couple months, probably more than any other fragrance I have in my entire collection. So how could it not be one of my 10 for life? Because I'm definitely going to get a refill of this when I'm done with it. From Louis Vuitton, Imagination. You know what had to be here, man. Imagination, Sicilian orange, Neroli, cinnamon, ginger, green tea. I've talked a lot about this fragrance and a lot of these fragrances on this list I've actually talked a lot about so I've kind of run out of adjectives uh, to describe them um, but again another versatility king another highly complimented fragrance another fragrance that again I guys if I go outside with this on I'm, I'm almost assured myself I'm going to be around other people somebody's going to say oh that smells good you smell good that's what this fragrance is at the end of the day Man, this stuff is good. And, and and honestly, to me, although I could wear this year round because it's just that kind of scent profile, it's that mass appealing, it's that good. But honestly, spring and summer is probably the best time to wear this. Just douse yourself in it, man, and go out and enjoy the world and enjoy smelling like a million bucks. From the brand of Louis Vuitton, a newcomer to my top 10 for life, Imagination. This next fragrance was also a no-brainer for me. It comes from a collection of fragrances that I have a lot of fragrances from this house because I really enjoy the house. So this is another brand where sometimes there could be two or three others uh, that I would put on a list like this in replace to replace this one. But this is phenomenal, man. From Killian, Straight to Heaven Extreme. Straight to Heaven Extreme. Of course, this is rum, cedarwood, patchouli, dried fruit. Vanilla, next level. Again, it's discontinued. Get the original straight to heaven. It's not as potent, but it's basically the same scent DNA. It smells the same, all right? You just got some amped up notes and accords in here. This one lasts a little bit longer, but the original straight to heaven smells like this, obviously. Ooh, this one has a little bit more of that woody, nutty nuance, though, uh, that I love, but it's just, again, one of my favorites in the entire Killian range. And that's saying something because Black Phantom is still a fragrance that I love, a single malt, apple brandy, um, angel share. Any of those honestly can make the list. All four of those fragrances is like right outside of my top 10. Um, but this one is just so special. It's discontinued, but thanks to my boy Ryan, um, I have like four other 
10 ml samples of this, maybe five, that I can just put in this bottle when it runs out. Cause now it's down to here. Cause I do rock it quite a bit. But one of my favorites for life, man, for sure. From by Killian, straight to heaven extreme. This next fragrance is another one that, when I do this list, has been consistently here and will probably be forever. From the brand of Maison, Francis Kirkton, this is Oud Satin Mood. Oud Satin Mood, we got rose, oud, violet, and vanilla. And that's exactly what you get here. You get the rose oud throughout the duration of the fragrance. This is rather linear, but that's fine because I mean, <laughs> I love everything about it. The rose oud, you get the oud here. Of course, you get the vanilla as well that gives it that sweetness. And the violet is what gives it that powderiness that you get. And again, it's a linear scent and you get all four of those notes from start to finish, but it is a phenomenal fragrance. It lasts forever. I also have the straight version of this fragrance. So either one will work for, uh, just to show you guys, but one of my fragrances for life forever will be this one from the brand Amazing Francis Kirk John, Oud Satin Mood. Every word, every descriptive word that I just utilized to talk about Oud Satin Mood applies to this one. It's one you've seen, it's one I've talked about forever, and it's one I will always talk about when I talk about my favorites of all time from the brand of Frederick Mall, Portrait of a Lady. Of course, I call it Portrait of a Man, but this is Rose, Cinnamon, Patchouli, Incense, and Musk, man. This is, one of those, this is one of those fragrances, a lot of people have taken my recommendation and tried this fragrance. It's not for everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, most of my uh, viewing audience are male, and a lot of males don't like to wear rose. That's cool. And, and I don't have a problem with that, man. Everybody is a little bit different when it comes to this fragrance thing. But rose works for me. Rose, patchouli, incense. It's a dark rose fragrance. That incense in that, that patchouli is earthy and green, you have the musk on the dry down, again, the smokiness from incense, but my God, this thing worked for me. I've said it before and I will say it again, this fragrance holds the record. In one day for the most compliments that I've gotten, in one day it was seven, but it was male and female. It works for me on my skin, all right? It will always be one of my top 10 fragrances for life. Done by one of my favorite master perfumers, Dominique Ropion. Guys, this is a masterpiece. This is Portrait of a Lady. But well, of course, when I rock it, when you guys rock it, Portrait of a Man. This next fragrance is another one that will go without saying. For me, always, at least this version of it. <laughs> From the brand of Creed, this is Aventus. This is Aventus. Of course, this is pineapple, birch, black currant, vanilla, ambergris. There is a lot of clones of this, but there is nothing like some of these original batches of Aventus, especially anything that's in a four ounce bottle, man, you good to go. I have a, I have a decanter of this that I utilize sometimes. I have a Aventus cologne that I like to use when I'm in the mood to wear this, because I'm trying to preserve this, what I have in this one. Um, this 17 N01 batch, special batch. I think this one gave the perfect balance of that pineapple and that smoky birch wood. But um, I also have a 3.3 ounce bottle of this. It's not quite what this is, man. The new stuff is not quite what the old stuff is. It just is what it is, it's a fact. But with that being said, it's one that I always love. I mean, it offers so much versatility. Um, a lot of people are wearing, of course, a lot of people are wearing clones of it, but at the end of the day, I can't discount what this fragrance has been to me and honestly what it's been to uh, the fragrance world as a whole. Uh, what this fragrance has brought to the fragrance world is just phenomenal what they were able to do with this fragrance, which came out in 2010. So it's always going to be one of my fragrances for life from Creed Aventus. Guys, this last fragrance that will be in my tent for life is so good. Another one that defies description. Um, from the brand of Unwatch, one of my favorite niche brands as well. This is Reflection 45. This is Jasmine Sandalwood Neroli, Myrrh Apopnex. Oh, this is so good. Albinum is in here. 
a lot of the same things I love about the original that most people probably loved about the original, the Jasmine, the Sound of Wood, and the Rolly. All that stuff is still here. And like I said, it's to way, the way to, for me to best describe this fragrance to you, if you smell the original, they just put some darker woods, they dirtied up the DNA a little bit and made it even more versatile. That's the way that I like to describe it. When you put in a Pompanax, Myrrh, Albinum, that kind of stuff. And it just took it to the next level in my opinion. I can't describe how good this fragrance is. You got to smell this stuff. One of my 10 for life from the brand of Unwise. Reflection 45. But that is it guys. That is my time. I hope you enjoyed this video today. What are your 10 fragrances for life? Give me your top three. Right now in your collection, what are your top three? I would love to hear from you guys down in the comment section. Now as always, I sincerely appreciate you guys' time and attention to these videos. I know you don't have to watch, but you do, and I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to take out a few moments to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use the information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy. Darren, I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.